Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. It is 4 a.m. <laughs> it seems like the only time that is a good time to film a video in my house is when I'm the only one awake and everybody else is asleep because there are just too many background noises and interruptions. Although I say that as I I know the cat's walking around looking for trouble, and there's a dog asleep in here on the floor. Well, sort of asleep. She's got one eye on my chair and one eye closed. Okay, so I'm back with my color project here in this ever-growing <laughs> book. Um, I did not film last week because I was trying to finish this, and then I forgot to show you what I'd done. So what I'm going to do is try to do a flip through and talk about, we'll talk about it. Okay, it's this one. These are all in sections and this is how I corral my project currently because it's just gotten to be uh, <laughs> kind of out of control. Alrighty, so what we have here uh, are part A and part B because I had these two into one signature and it was like really fat and there's no way that that I'm I just can't leave it like that it's too big can you imagine that saying that a book that you make with all the stuff you like in it is too big eh. all right so I think this is the first part of it and I don't ooh, oh I got bent um, I don't remember oh it really got bent I don't remember um, how much I showed last time but this has got new stuff in it since the last flip through so here this um, wiser heads have prevailed that this section here was a bad idea um, this could have been a book all its own because it's so fat that it added bulk to the signature that I'm not sure that it really needed but I had little things. Now, this book, I don't consider this a junk journal because I did not use junk mail. I didn't use junky things. I used things that were from other projects that I made um, on pur purpose fodder making. I don't, like I said, I don't consider this to be a junk journal. Okay, so let's go through it. Oh, I can't believe I bent my thing here. Oh. <clears throat> Alrighty, so I put a tab on here because... I don't have long fingernails. Well, I have them periods and I had them day before yesterday and I just chopped them all off because I was like, they get in the way. And then I got dye all around my finger from doing something. I was like, oh my word, this looks terrible. It's the only finger on my hand that's turned blue. So off they went. All right, so here we are with this. I think I mentioned in a past video that this was done, this red one was done way before I thought about making color things, but I do like this little envelope. Oh, there's something in there. I forgot. Oh, there's lots of some things in there. <laughs> Seek and you shall be surprised. All right, so there's three different stamps in there. Now, these are not real stamps. These are photos of stamps that, you know, cut out of a stamp catalog or off of scrapbook paper and then I glued them onto other things to make them more bulky. Oops, let me push that in there a little bit more so it'll close. Okay, there's that. This, okay, I don't know about anybody else, but I am crazy about rub-ons. I just love them. I don't think I can have two, see, rub-ons for me like stickers are for other people. Stickers are fine, but I do like rub-ons. There's just something, I don't know, something cool about a rub-on. All right, so there's this one. This was a cluster I made for another journal and ended up not using it. It's on the back of a, or on the front of a stamp. I tried to make this one all about postage. This paper came out of a magazine that a friend sent to me that I really love this paper, and you're going to see this again. This is a little miniature place to write thoughts down, although evidently I don't have any thoughts because <coughs> it's empty. Or no thoughts worth keeping. All right, so then I cut out generic tabs of leftover papers. So that's what you're going to see on some of these. This was done from doodling. Then there's a pad that I made for um, a past project. It's got some lined paper. These are tea, tea dye and coffee dyed papers that were left over from another project. 
and it's in a belly band so that you can slip the back in and out. I like that so that my papers are not wiggling around. This I don't know how to explain. <laughs> it was pink and I tried to take a Posca and go over the um, the glossy accent glaze over it didn't go so well but at least it covered up some of the pink then i did put scraps in here i took a photograph of um oh what do i it's it's a uh this goes this way it's of an accordion book for a handmade book club they were making accordion books and this is mine it's called the universe this is it all stretched out there. So I took a photograph of it with a sprocket because I like putting them in my monthly calendar to show what I accomplished in the month to see projects I finished to, you know, kind of document them. There's music paper and this is, I don't know, uh, this is from a stencil. Again, this is all papers that were meant for other projects and they were left over because I didn't use them. And this is a sticker I made with the Xyron. Again, this is also um, something I painted, and then I made it into a sticker with the Xyron. And then there's my little G Kirk closure, and my poor little thing got bent, but hopefully it'll keep working enough. This, I, you're going to see a lot of these. I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I had done these once before in the past, a long time ago, and I'd forgotten about them until I saw a video in a class. And it reminded me of doing pictures this way. And um, so I did it of a drawing that I, or this is a sticker on a piece of white paper, then kind of did the lines around it and then put it inside two pieces of acetate I had left over. And this is, I think this is either my white sheet I dyed or it's a uh, sorry ribbon. I can't remember which one. And then again, it's in a belly band where it's not going to be bouncing around in the book a lot. This is a mini book. And I learned how to do this from, oh, I can't remember who it was, to how to make the book flat. And then I just put little teeny extra drawings I had on the side of every page in here. There's only three pieces of paper. I mean, it's nothing to get excited about, but it was fun. This is a trifold. So this is one of the doodles I did, and um, I just glued it on the top. This is magazine paper from this picture here. You know, it was a big piece, and I cut it into pieces so that I got the most bang for my buck out of that picture. Isn't it beautiful? I, you know, I'm not a blue person, but I kind of, I was digging this. A doodle I glued on there. They're just doodles on the pages. Then each one has a tag that I made from ICAD. You know, these are all the 61 ICAD cards I did. Instead of making them that, I did the tags. They were a lot of fun, but I, at, by the time the 61 days was over, I was mentally exhausted. And then there's another tag inside here. They were so much fun, but, you know, 61 days of trying to come up with a different idea, sometimes your brain just, just goes into neutral. It's like, okay, I'm done. Then I glued it on here. This is a double-sided paper clip because I flip it over here and that paper clip is holding in another doodle on uh, jelly print and my sewing machine does not like acetate. As you can see, it is so messed up, but I don't really care because it gives it character. And then, see, I'm on a kick with the, <laughs> with the acetate. Can you tell? <laughs> If I was smart, I would have done it two-sided so I could have used it for multiple, you know, places, but I didn't think about that when I was doing it. I was just so excited to, to get this fodder going. Again, this is another iCAD inside a piece of my friend's jelly print. That I'm crazy about this print, and I use it over and over. That's because she was nice enough to have scanned it for me and sent me the file. Yay! This is leftover paper from something I did. I didn't like it, so... The best thing to do to it was cut it down in small pieces where it looks better. These I found, oh my goodness, where did I find these? I found these in a drawer somewhere when I was cleaning something out. And I thought, well, I'm never going to use these for anything, so I use it for a tab. Music paper. 
back when somebody said, um, sew down the strips, extra strips you've got, and make something to go on the edge of a page. And I like this idea because it gives my page a little page a little more girth. And then I sandwiched, first I sewed on, oh, actually I glued on the lace. Then I, I had already sewn this on the paper and glued that over it. So that's why it looks different on either side. Again, this was the same concept. This was like a snippet type thing where you put little leftovers, tiny pieces, and glued them on there. And then I just sewed around the edges and glued that on there. So I got a nice creative sandwich there. Again, another iCAD card. The silly things come in handy. Sewed on a piece of paper, glued it in. Ta-da! This is the, the, no, there's, I think I had four of these. I don't know what they had created them for, but they came in handy. There's another iCAD. Inside a pocket. There's a little tiny tag with the belly band. This is a sticker from Sukwang. I haven't used it yet. So I just uh, I slip it in there until I decide where to actually put it permanently. And then this is the back. This is crazy. I, there's no focal point in here. It's just craziness, but I don't really care because I got to use up things that I had already, you know, stuff like came out of this little drawer here where I would tangle, a tangle where I would doodle on these leftover painty strips from the ends of things. I doodle on them and I save them to put them as accent pieces. And inside each one of these is, I bought this um, when I was in 2010, 2013, somewhere in there where I was doing the pocket letters. And the woman wanted to do a theme that was strictly sunflower. So I had to go on Etsy and buy, wow, a lot of shadows, sorry. Um, go on Etsy and buy sunflower related material. So I found those again in a drawer and I thought, well, this is crazy, I'm not using any of this. So I decided since these were sunflowers on this paper that I would incorporate sunflowers in here and to go along with the blue theme, I just put it on the back of the blue paper. Another sunflower one, it's a digifile. I just printed it off on cardstock. I like these, I think these are wonderful. Uh, this, I think these are, there's a place that somebody who has lots of different uh, themes on their on miniaturized dictionary And then I just put it in there, and the pockets all are, these are sunflowers from, you know, the paper that I used. Where is it? Back, no, not that one. Fooey. I used the paper somewhere else in here. <laughs> somewhere. Anyway, so I just put those in the pockets to keep the, kind of tone down the yellow a little bit, because it has blue in it. So I thought I would kind of tie them all together. It's crazy. There is no focal point. Your eye is like going bing, 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 everywhere. That's part A. Part B, another iCAD card with uh, a doodle glued on it. Then I did leaves from, I have a, a stamp, so I watercolored and stamped on it, cut it out. This is another one of those little things from the drawer. This is a, this is a um, paper clip. And then it's got a pocket, and inside that pocket is just a little piece of paper with another flower glued on it. The back side doesn't have a lot. This is a tag with another doodle on it, just glued on the tag. There's no, I usually have the line stamp back here, but I forgot. I did this with watercolors with a um, stencil from What If NC. And this is a vellum pocket. This is a tag pocket where you put little tags. I think it's supposed to be a stamp pocket. And then I had all these little little tiny books that I made for other projects. And I find it difficult, since I don't have long fingernails, I find it difficult to dig things out of pockets. So I saw people put little tabs on their pockets so that when you can't get something out, all you have to do is grab the little tag and it makes it easier. These are tickets that were printed. This is just a random stamp that was out of a book. Oh, no, wait, that's scrapbook paper. I see the pink lines on the back. So, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just cute little stuff to stick in there. 
and inside the pocket is ephemera that I got in the mail from someone and I made um, kind of a, I don't know what you call it, a, a thing, <laughs> a thing, it's a thing, and put that on there. It was for another project and I didn't like the way it turned out so I thought, well, let's, let's use it. And then I didn't glue, is this, there's something under there? Yeah, I didn't glue this down. I made it so that um, we could, I could flip it. I took some um, card stock that was a ruler and I cut it and then I took the ruler, folded it in half and made it so that it was a hinge. I didn't want to use washi tape, this is paper. So um, I glued, again, scrapbook paper on here, made a belly band. This is left over from another project and I had like a safety pin in it, but I found I never used them. So I took the safety pin out and then put it in here for um, display purposes. And I made sure the button was there so it would kind of catch. Again, just random scrapbook paper. That's a, a stamp of a set someone gave me. An odd piece of paper that I made into a tab. I like the tabs on the tops of my books so that when I did, when I put them on a bookcase I'm not cramming them on the sides. All right here are here's that paper I said I didn't like so what I did was I, well, I, I like it but it's just too dark. So then I took leftover paper here's some of that print that my friend gave to me another stamp and so I took leftover paper stamped it sewed it in the little book and so it's a little way to take notes or a to-do list whatever you want to make it and yes it's leftover paper i'm trying to use up stuff that i keep generating more stuff for you know like the cut ends off a of paper when it's too long and you cut off that's what the inside of that is here is a doodle and there's those pieces where i doodled on paper that were off cuts and I just doodled on the edge. This again is the same thing. These are those um, acetate pieces where I sewed them. This time I glued them onto background um, blue jelly print paper. They don't come off and they're not pockets. They're meant to be just the way they are. In order to kind of break up so you see one and the other, I just put a line of paper there. This is a little envelope that I made. There's nothing in it. It's just jelly roll paper on Chinese paper. And then I sewed one of those little leftover tags from the drawer. This is paper and a belly band. The one I said that looked like a ruler. There it is right there. This is scrapbook paper. The whole page was nothing but rulers. And so this was all leftover offcuts of uh, copy dyed paper. I hate wasting it because like I didn't get to drink the coffee, <laughs> so I'm not wasting paper when I made it. These are, again, the, um, the acetate. I save, I, gosh, I've been saving acetate for probably five or six years. So I, I, I figured, well, I'm gonna start using it. So I did. And this is a jelly print that has a, a watercolor stamp on it. And then it's sewn in here and glued onto that background paper. The same for this one. This is the same paper as this right here. But it looks different when there's something on it and acetate surrounds it. This was a watercolor on a long off. Um, it's a watercolor with um, a stencil. I borrowed the stencil, but I had to mail them back. Darn it. <laughs> and this is the back. This was a long tag that didn't make the cut for another book just scraps glued on there and I punched out little stars. This is one of those, what do they call them, figure eight envelopes made out of my paper that I tried an experiment with and I don't think it went very well, but you know, the end product's not horrible, but it's not what I was. Sorry about the, the break in the video. <laughs> I, my, my card was full and the camera went, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> so, all right, so this is the last part of it. This is, um, like I said, an envelope that I tried doing something and it didn't quite work out the way I wanted. I still like the paper enough to keep it. wasn't going to get rid of it. And then again, here's the uh, little leftover stuff from another project. Then zigzag down the thing, glued it on the end here, found a random heart that was cut out for yet another project, and I just glued it on there. 
So that fits in there nicely, and there you go. So these two are going to become a signature, not a signature, a book of their own. I've decided that there are too many signatures, and they are way too fat to fit in my book. For example, I found this, I think I showed this in one or two other videos. I found this club cracker box where I thought that the spine would be big enough to hold it, but by the time I started putting all the stuff into the signatures and I finished the signatures, uh, guess what? <laughs> it's not gonna fit. So, uh, <laughs> I decided that this cannot be a whole book just of colors. I'm gonna have to do them in small segments. So I have two of the blue and I have two, is it two? No, I have one fat green one. Then I have a very fat pink one. And then I have two of the purples and I have one yellow, yellow, orange, reddish stuff in there. So I'm gonna come back with videos that will show you all the others. And then let me tell you what I think, I've been thinking about doing. I have to put this back in or it's gonna explode. Um, I was thinking that each book will have the, I th I'm thinking that all the covers should be the same and that the stitching on the spine with the um, the thread or whatever I use will be the color that corresponds with the book on the inside. So I don't have to label it going, this is the pink book, this is the blue book. I will do it in the thread that corresponds with the color of the book that's inside, or signatures that are inside. Um, I belong to handmadebookclub.com and they have all kinds of spines and examples of books in in their archives, so I'm going to go through there, and as I'm putting um, these together, I want to try to teach myself how to do more decorative spines with different stitches. So the stitching on the spines might all look different, but again, the color of the thread will correspond with the signatures inside. The outside cover might be very plain, and then the color of the stitching will denote what's inside. Okay, I think that's it for me today. Um, I had pondered the idea of doing Inktober. I'm not really sure I'm going to do it or not. And today is the third. I don't even know what day it is. I know it's Monday. It's either the second or third. I think I'm, we're on the second. We're on the third. Anyway, so um, let, me, let me look at my cell phone. What does it say? It says nothing. <laughs> it says today is the third. Okay, so I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to look around. I'm going to look at day one. I'm going to do the Zentangle or the Doodles um, Inktober. We'll see how this goes. I may not do it all. We'll see. Anyway, if I do it, I will be sure to come back and show you guys what I've done. Thanks, everybody, for watching and enduring the whole thing. <laughs> I would really love it if you guys watched the whole video instead of like six seconds or six minutes of it. It helps to build up my, my numbers a little bit more, and I would really like that. So, thanks for joining, and come back to see the green, pink, purple, and yellow. <laughs> see you guys. Bye.